UFC 273 guys, we have Vince Pinchel versus Mark Madsen. Mark Madsen obviously got a lot of uh, hype behind him, but both guys here being um, on the older side, you know, 37 and 39 coming into this, and you know, it makes for a good little knock here. I think it's a very, very competitive, evenly matched fight. We'll get down into it. But before we get into it, guys, this video is sponsored by Full Reptile Collective, brought to you by Dan Hardy. Head over to their website at fullreptile.co.uk where you can find anything from training gear, t-shirts, hoodies, all the way to coffee. For an exclusive 10% off, use Dan Said So at checkout. Make sure to also check out their YouTube channel for some of the best MMA content out there, bar my own. Let's get back to the video. All right, guys, we'll start with Vince Pinchel on this because, like I said, he's 39 years old. He's been in the UFC for a decade now. He's only had nine fights, not including the exhibition ones from The Ultimate Fighter, is how he obviously came through. Lost in the final, I like Quinn to beat him. Um, look, he's a good, he's a very good fighter. He doesn't fight enough, but he has fought recently against Austin Hubbard, which was a very competitive fight, very good fight. Showed a lot of good things that he could take into this fight against Mark Madsen. Mark Madsen's obviously got more hype behind him. It got squashed a little bit in his last fight against Clay Guida, which we can get into that in a bit. But what I want to talk about is all the good things Vince, Vince does because. He does a lot of good things. He has a lot of holes in his game, obviously, which is why he's ranked where he is, which is why he fights less. I'm sure, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was due to injury a lot of the time, not just inconsistency of, I don't want to fight. There's reasons behind these things. But he's got a lot of good things going for him. So let's start with a continuous popping of a jab. What he does is he, what he, he likes to fight going backwards, which is very weird and unorthodox for a lot of guys. Fights backwards, Pops the jab, loses a lot of feints, has his hands extremely low. When he moves backwards, obviously, he's got a lot of power coming out of the blue. It's very hard to telegraph a shot that is coming from your waist. Bobby Green does it better than pretty much anyone I've seen. Not many people have their hands low because obviously the money maker is exposed and if you're moving backwards, that's a little dangerous. He laterally moves when he is going offensive. Mark Madsen darts in and out and uses a completely blitzing kind of karate based in and out darting style. Um, not to the extent of a karate user, but that's the comparison I'm giving because he doesn't laterally move at all. When it comes to side by side kind of movement, he plods. So that's one thing to watch out for here. Vince has massive potential here. He has genuine knockout power going backwards, overhand right, hits with the uppercut in, in the left. Great clinch work as well, hits elbows off the clinch, very hard to take down. Both guys as well, I'd like to say, extremely physical guys, very top heavy. Obviously Greco-Roman for Mark here, but very, very top heavy in the sense of physically strong. You know, they got the old man strength at this weight class. So when he moves backwards, he does fire that left hook and that right overhand. Um, this is Vince here, uh, and you saw it against Damian Brown. You know, I know that's a long time ago, that's five years ago, that knockout, which is mad to think, but... You know, he's, he's been around, he's fought a lot of decent opponents. The Austin Hubbard one is one good comparison with Mark, where Mark looked a bit more impressive, I'd say, against Austin. Um, Vince got taken down a few times, reverse position, but showed he has a little bit of grappling. But I just feel like if Mark gets him on the floor, then it's uh, he's just going to trap him. But again, Vince does a lot of things to negate that. Another one being the leg kicks. The leg kicks against Austin Hubbard were brilliant because it started off, Austin was throwing the calf kick to him. How does he reply with it? He doesn't check it at all. He instantly replies. He throws a kick of his own. Beautifully done. If you can't check it, land one of your own. Austin eventually slowed down and stopped throwing the kick. Vince didn't slow down at all, kept the kick going, and then changed it to an inside low. Changed it to an inside low, dashed forward with the overhand right, committed a lot of power to it. And that's where the comparison with him and Mark come in. They both load up that power shot, overextend completely, step forward way too much. Whether, but with Vince, he's you know he's in trouble then. He oversteps and he's got no out. His out is, I'm gonna bully myself, fight in the pocket, and hope they don't wanna check, exchange with me, and then I can get out of it. With Mark, if he overextends and throws that, that power shot and he connects, brilliant, he hit you with a great shot. If he overextends and misses, he then gets in with the Greco game. He then gets the clinch, he then gets the body lock. I mean, let's get into Mark here because Mark himself has a lot of good tools. He's got a lot of holes in his game as well, which we saw in the last fight against Clay Guida. I'd like to talk about that. 
So obviously Mark Madsen 2016 Rio Games silver medalist here, Greco-Roman wrestling, phenomenal upper body strength. A lot of holes in this game though because we show, it showed against Clay Guida where he tried to grab Clay Guida. What did Clay Guida do? Completely push him away, run away, you know, back off completely, wants nothing to do with it and it negated all of the attacks from the clinch. The attacks where you're against the cage is a different matter. You know, should you be beating Clay Guida convincingly at this stage in your career? If you want to prove yourself, yes you do. Clay Guida definitely deserves to be in the UFC still. We all love the carpeted a bit, but you should be beating him decisively, convincingly. All those great words. You should be absolutely hammering Clay Guida. Very hard to finish the guy, but again, Mark had a lot of hype. He's got that, that base where you can kind of dominate people, but didn't dominate Clay Guida at all, slowed down dramatically in the third round. That's an issue because Vince Pichel has a rhythm to his striking. He doesn't seem to slow down. He's got great cardio for a three round fight. Physically, these guys are just gonna go, they're gonna butt heads in this. And the clinch game is actually where I think a large portion of this fight is gonna take place because as I said with how they both overextend with their right hands, when he steps through and he does grab that clinch, that is where Mark has a very high advantage, not only with the grappling, with the trips, with the body locks, etc., to slam him to the floor, hold him in half guard and pound the ground with the ground and pound, but he has an excellent knee game. When he gets into that clinch position, showed it against Guida, showed it against Austin Hubbard, showed it in the regional scenes, he lands those knees. That is very important. He's taking the gas out of the people, he's hurting the legs, he's making them easier to trip. Harder to defend your legs if they're tired, if they're beaten up. Harder to defend your body if it's tired, if it's beaten up. It's harder to go 15 rounds at the same pace if you're tired and beaten up. It's all the same game plan. Mark does it very well. Has a great left hook coming out of the clinch. Vinch has a great right hook, elbow. Loves throwing the elbow, again, Austin Hubbard. It's a great comparison fight to have with these guys. It's also a recent fight to have with these guys. The Clay Guida one is something that a lot of it is gonna come into because Vinch has a very high output as well, like Guida. You know, Mark suffered badly when Guida stood in the pocket and decided to throw those looping hooks over the top and just all you saw was, was Mark panic and kind of put his hands up to try and push him away instead of get out of the way with head movement. He, he kind of panicked and froze in those sort of positions. You panic and freeze against Vince Purcell like that, I think he's gonna crack your heart. He's got a lot of knockout power for this weight class as well. Hasn't shown recently, needs to fight more. It's a really good fight between these two guys and I hope you guys are excited about this fight as I am because I think it deserves a little more oomph to it because Mark Madsen, although he's 37 years old, is he the oldest prospect in the game right now? Because it, I feel like that's exactly what he's been labelled as. Vince Pincel, everyone loves him. You've got to back a moustache. Someone comes in with a moustache like that, you've got to back him, right? So in summary, guys, here we've got Vince Pincel, super physical, dangerous overhand right, low guard, fires off all the shots from a very hard to telegraph position, great inside low kick, great outside low kick, laterally moves and has a darting overhand right. Mark Madsen, physical specimen, clinching for days, knees up the middle, weakens the body because he can't go three rounds hard. That third round he dies off, he wants you to slow down with him. Great left hook out of the, out, out of the exchange, out of the clinch, overhand right, steps hard with it, but again, doesn't matter because of the clinch, great trips, half guard ground and pound, has it for days. There's a lot of good things about these guys. Um, it's a very good competitive fight here. I'm gonna back Vince Pincel in this one. I think he can he can give a, he can give a, a loss. Like I think he can take the O from Mark here. I think he's very underrated as well. Austin Hubbard's a tricky opponent, um, and you know he's fought he's fought some really good guys. You know the the loss to Gregor Gillespie back in the day. That was probably about five years ago as well. It's um, like those sort of things don't matter because Mark's not Gregor Gillespie. Like I know he's a silver medalist in the Olympics. I know he's got absolute phenomenal wrestling. He doesn't use it for MMA that much. In, like he hasn't shown it in the UFC. He likes to strike. Whether he uses it against Vince, can he hold him down and pass him and, and submit him like Gregor did? No, I don't think he can. He hasn't shown that game in his history. I don't think he's gonna suddenly appear with it now. So for me, I think I kind of think Vince is gonna win a, a unanimous decision. I think he's gonna go three rounds. It's gonna be a hard fought three rounds. It's a great fight, guys. Let me know in the comments below who you think is going to win. Like the video if you have enjoyed it, guys, and subscribe to the channel if you are new, guys. Love it. See you in the next one, people.